This is not scripted. We don't have no notes here. This is this is just unfiltered. You know what I mean? We're unfiltered people. Just raw stuff coming to the surface. Why? Because it needs to. But that's not a mystery girl all the time. But I don't want it no more. It's too long now. She took her all her kids away from me. They call me Buffy. Yeah. And I miss them all the time. Okay, let me tell you something that no one knows about me. That no one knows, that I never told anybody. I just told two people in my family. Something bad happened to me. Someone that I thought that was a father figure. He took advantage of me. Anyways, I had a baby, and no one knows this. I had a baby when I was 15 years old. Till this day. This is season two. Hey! <laughs> Woo! We're so happy that you guys are here, first of all. Welcome to Fill in the Truth, season two. You guys are our first guests on here. Oh. Why don't we start with uh, introducing ourselves? I'm Ray. This is Candy. Nice to meet you guys. Nice to meet you. Candy. And my name is, and my name is Adam. Hey. <laughs> We're so happy that you guys are here, first of all. You know, that you gave us the time to come out of your day. We're just so glad that you guys are here because it takes a lot, you know, just to put that time in. And yeah, let's let's get to it. I'm excited. Yeah, thank you for having us. For sure. Yeah, Giving thank us you. Giving platform and for us to be able to voice what we got to voice, you know? Yeah. Thanks. Nice scene. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna take it there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you again for coming, and thank you, Keon, Aaron, yeah, for the setup. behind the it's scenes. The yeah, you know, nice. we're just starting off, so this is in my apartment, and we came up with this idea, um, what is it, like three months ago. So oh, we just wow. recently oh, started. Crazy. How do you guys feel season two? We talked a lot about, like, some revamp, and originally we started off with wanting to do more of, like, interior revamp, mm. but it costs a lot. So, <laughs> so we just started. Isn't it, isn't it payoff? It pay yeah, off. yeah. You know, That's right. You do. You have to invest in it, and it will pay off. Because I'm an overthinker too, so I get it. But sometimes, like, just, just stop and just really believe what you gotta do and just make it work. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's right. The goods is right here. That's right. The goods is right here. You can just record yourself and fuck it. What's your zodiac sign? I'm a Leo. Ooh. Leo. Oh, happy birthday. Yeah. July 19 and 26. Oh, okay, cancer. cancer. Okay. And then seven days later, it's his birthday and, and he's always, a Leo. It always falls on the same day. Like, if it's his yeah, we're, Wednesday, we're we'll Wednesday. Wow. Oh, it always falls the same day. Like, next week, it's, you know. Y'all just soulmates over there, Pisces, huh? Right? Woo, yep. Pisces. I'm a Pisces. Ooh, oh, dang. Go, go. Bass off, bass off. That was way intimate. Ooh, which I love. <laughs> yeah, I'm a Gemini, so. Uh, okay. I met you guys on my birthday actually. I know it was like crazy. Oh my god, that's right. That's it was your birthday party met. that day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Flux. Oh no, but there was a lot going on. It was it was I don't horrible. remember that night. So <laughs> no, I loved it. It was a cool vibe. Everybody was, it was, everybody was amazing. It was a nice vibe. Yeah, so shout out to Flux. Shout Woo! Out to Flux. For always bringing out the good oh, vibes oh, and connecting yeah. us people with everybody. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. Oh yeah. Oh, DJ Gracie. Gracie. DJ Gracie. <laughs> But we had a blast that night. It was, it was. Yeah. Fun. Hey, and it was meant to be, you yeah. know? It was meant to be the energy, you know, the frequency that you guys had. And um, that's a, that's the thing that, that's that's why you guys are on here. It's your frequency, it's your vibe, it's your yeah, energy. Yeah. You know, it's what makes yeah. you unique. And let's get right into it. You guys are big on social media, but they don't know is the background of you guys. Mm -hmm. And um, I just wanted to know if you guys can give us, like, a brief bio of, like, you know, where you're from, where you grew up a little bit, you know, and... Um, 
yeah just just tell the just tell the, the viewers that hey. so my name is adam and i'm, um, I'm originally from bakersville oh and bakersville. oh in the desert <laughs> Get out. on the other side of the grapevine so that's where i was raised i'm, I'm a rich well I was, my family's, some of them are from Shafter. And then Shafter's and, extra ghetto. Yeah, it's extra small. And it's small. like super small. Where's that? It's Is like that one high school. Bakersfield? It's like maybe 15, 20 minutes away from Bakersfield. Yeah. Okay. And so I was like raised shout there when I was Shafter. Shout out to Shafter. Shout out Shafter, to Shafter, 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 Bakersfield. Yeah. Shout out to all the family yeah. for sure. Wow. And so, so like, yeah, so I moved there and then um, I just was going to school there because I got kicked out of schools in Shafter and then I moved to Bakersfield and then I got kicked out of schools there. <laughs> And then um, um, I just, yeah, that's why I met him. It was in Bakersfield. And, uh, and that's where I'm originally from, you know, like Bakersfield. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, Bakersfield. You know, I'm originally from Oxnard, but I move around. You know, I went to Bakersfield. Bakersfield also my city. Monterey Park, East LA. I go everywhere. Monterey Park. I, I just moved from I Monterey, Monterey Park, Park, too. I Did love Monterey really? Park, oh, yeah, yes. I love yeah. Monterey Park. For us, we just express ourselves. We love music, so we react to music on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And we love to buy the music. He grew up with oldies. I grew up with Spanish music, so we just mix and we just vibe, and to me, this is what it is. So I guess from there. So so just, like I don't, you guys remember like musically, right? Before TikTok. Oh, musically. musically. I've never heard of it. So yeah, musically was before TikTok. No, no, it was musically, and then they musically became TikTok. Oh, okay. okay. I always thought it was Vine and then TikTok. TikTok was musically. Like you, okay. they were like they were like you would your your video would go like um, it would be featured. It would be featured. Wow. And so you would oh, get all these messages, okay. and one day we're like, what the. Is a, why is our phone going off? Like, <laughs> and he would always be featured, you know, and he would do videos, but just it yeah, just kept just happening. Myself, and like and then, um, so when well, it turned, see, I when go, it turned I go into way TikTok. back from MySpace, you know what I mean? Ooh, uh, yeah, MySpace. So the vibe, it was, and it was yeah. a vibe, it was music, yeah. it was expression. So that's how I see social media, you yeah. know what I mean? I like to express Beautiful. myself, and I like to be really honest, and I feel like you know, I like to be really organic with myself again. At the end of the day, I'm around real people, so if I'm showing faith, they're gonna be like, they know fake as fuck, you know what I mean? People that know me in real life. So the, I, I want to match that same energy. You know what I'm saying? Beautiful. So I, you know, so I feel like that's the way, that's the way it is. You know what I mean? That's how I see things with me. Yeah. Beautiful. So, yeah, so back to what I was saying it was that, um, that so when it turned into TikTok, he started trying to post again. And and it just kept like kind of de like declining it. Or it wasn't, ex it was just wasn't, so he kept doing it. And then it blocked him. It took away his whole account. So then I was like, you know what? Let me try to do something with TikTok, you know? So then he wasn't on board at first. And then so he finally kind of started jumping on. I was doing videos by myself a little bit, right? Cringy as fuck. They were, because like, I'm not like, it's so funny, but like, I'm not like the type to throw myself out there. Like, all this is happening because of Trino, you know? No, 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 no. It is. I'm, it's, it's, I'm, I'm it's, at no. the end of the day, I'm his prop. So I'm no, just like no, here, no. just like, yep. chilling, you know? No, but see, it's not true because I feel like, you know, I did think of myself on TikTok, and at the end of the day, I feel like it's a flow. You know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like people like Adam and then like me, and I just. I, I feel like there's like Adam. there's something for everybody. Oh, it's you know? just, just some real shit right here. So you know, I feel like uh, maybe I wasn't really being organically myself at that moment. You know what I mean? And I feel like this was the, the yeah. piece that was missing. You yep. know what I'm saying? I feel like we're just showing ourselves, and I thought that's what it was. So. Yeah. And it's so yeah. funny because I feel like um so many people like when we're out when we're out you know in the public. <clears throat> they'll be like, hey, you guys are those guys from TikTok. And I feel like our numbers are so much bigger on Instagram. So it's kind of like, wow. it's kind of like, wow, like, you know, like, yeah, it's like, how do you know me from TikTok when I feel like we're so much bigger over here, you know? But but it's, it's humbling. I love it. I love That's when beautiful. we're out in public and there's a lot of times where I'm, just right now, when we're coming to this, you this, told this me. set, yeah, <laughs> um, someone stopped, was pulling out of their little space, and they're like, hey, you guys, those guys so from we TikTok, saw we're like, you know? Oh, we're going to fight? <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's up, fool? <laughs> yeah. It's like, say, yeah, I love you guys. Oh, I love you guys too. <laughs> I know. Okay. Okay. He told me that that his partner passed away like maybe three years ago, and that he's like, my partner would have loved you guys, you know. Oh. But it was just cool that he wanted to take a picture with us, you know. And it was just so yeah, see little it's, moments stuff like that. Can we get a lot? Of, you, just got, you just got the message from this guy that his 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 boyfriend's in prison, huh? His boyfriend's in prison. And, and, and like, it, yeah. it's it's so beautiful to hear that he's um he's waiting for his boy, boyfriend in prison and. We're encouraging him to want to uh, feed into his relationship, to wow. take it serious. I love shit like that because, it, you know, the people think that we're just Oof, on social media, but I to got me, chills. it's like, we see each other, you know what I mean? I love it. I think that um, people don't understand the recognition that people get or in person, how um, when they see us, you know, we see we see each other, you know what I mean? 
it's such a it's such a beautiful feeling you know what i mean for me it's because beautiful we're just expressing ourselves and then this is happening and i'm just thinking like what the fuck's going on like wow. why am i broke yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, well, like i have family members that are like hey like you know i bet you're like rich now and i'm like i'm actually not like yeah, when people say shit like this like people have a wow of, like numbers on social media and like just gotta be like we bring our motherfuckers for real you know what i mean i don't like that shit like let, let, let's go ahead and vibe each other and let's network that's and let's, right let's embrace each other and and um and let's help and heal each other at the end of the day exactly that fame shit, that's what's going on with tiktok nowadays yep. everybody has numbers and everybody walks around like they're famous yep that would never be me that's yeah. tacky that's embarrassing <laughs> I love your guys' yeah, vibes, but y'all like, real, man. Ugly, like, don't, don't act like yep. that. A little number, everybody wants to act like that's it. You know what I'm saying? They want to go live on TikTok, and cool. If you want to do that, go. And they want to go and just, like, you know, I'm not going to sell myself out. You know what I mean? This is yeah. a new trend on TikTok yeah. where, like, if someone gives you, like, a little flower, you go, like, it smells good. Yeah. <laughs> it, that's dude, so... Dude, do it. But imagine, no <laughs> pendejo. <laughs> Tastes delicious. I see that, and I'm like, that's so... I'm telling you with yeah. all these trends, man. I mean, yeah. it's cool. I mean, I, I better get you money, but it's like, I couldn't never. Selling yourself out. Selling yourself exactly. Out. Yeah. I believe that's... in that shit. Doing I, the I most. It, you know what I'm saying? I just always think when I was a little younger, the things, you know... Uh, Things that you do, you look back and say, what the fuck was I thinking wearing that shit? Imagine these moments. <laughs> Girl, everybody has them. They will, mm -hmm. they will, This will be forever, you know what I mean? Back in the 90s, we didn't have this stuff. So I am so glad because I was a mess. That's <laughs> right. So hey, we were all. Right, they don't same. have documents, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm, sh I'm glad that Instagram didn't exist when oh, for sure. I, I didn't was have in a high phone until I was 25 years old <laughs> when I met him. 25 what? when you had your you had a pager or what? I had a pager. I didn't know how to use it. You know how you do the little codes? Like yeah, I yeah, yeah code like, hello. Oh, were you the code guy? Yeah, no, I was the code guy because I couldn't even afford the quarter to pay for the payphone. Oh, like, my God. I was broke, man. Like, I was trying. Well, there was a trick to the payphones. Remember that shit? Mm -hmm. There was, but. There was a trick. That you can get a number. The payphones have a number. And if you get it, you can you can give it to people and the payphone will ring. Then we're, oh, okay, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes we buy pay phone and it will ring. We'll be like, hey, what number did you call? And they'll be like, and we'll write it down. And then <laughs> we'll have people call that number. Yeah. <laughs> you don't even want to touch it these days. <laughs> I wanted to ask you guys. So with social media, you get the DMs and the messaging. And even right now, when somebody came up to you, do you ever get people trying to come at you for how you look and stuff? Like, All the time. Yeah? I mean, what is I, that to like? To be the honest truth, I, you know, um, we live really for real life, so... You know, uh, people have been hateful in real life. So the social media ain't shit. They think it's shit, but they really isn't. But uh, the direct, I see more love. It's like it, that's it, all we see is the more, love. Right? But some yeah. people come with like gay or you shouldn't be shaving your head. You know, just stupid shit. But in reality, Don't dress like that. But in reality, think about it. Like you're showing yourself. Even exactly. if you're private, you're showing yourself. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Like people are seeing who you are. Like like you're. It's and a lot of times they're grown men. That's embarrassing. Yeah. That is. Saying, I'm looking yeah. at you like, well, you're putting yourself out there like that? They're going to come for your ass. <laughs> mm -hmm. Your true colors coming out, boy. Yeah. See, when I see direct messages, I just see them and I just keep it going because some people are angry about something else. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I know anger. So I can connect. I'm like, oh, I know what you're going through. Get out the closet, motherfucker. That's right. Yeah. That's so true. <laughs> you know? And like you said, you know, when people come at you that way, it's because they're going through something. It's yeah. because they don't love themselves. It's because, you know, they don't accept themselves. And by you guys being so real and who you are, I always tell people, when you are real, when you are good unto others, that goodness comes back to you. You know, and me seeing you guys in person, being here right now on social media, and every time you guys repost somebody when they tag you on something and you showing those people that love, it like it's a different type of love. You oh, know, and giving that. them that attention because I, I, people mention me, I repost it. It's just like, oh my gosh, my story, I love my it. My story is lit because people are doing it, but I'm like, damn, I should never stop you. But I'm so uh, you know in love with the people who just want to embrace uh, how we make people smile with just yes. music, yes, yes, like, something like that. So that's what that that's just what it means to me. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know, I go way back doing like YouTube. You know, when we were like in Bakersfield. And um, I was recording myself on a laptop, you know, so I've been very expressive since I was really young, you know what I mean? I feel like I needed, it was kind of like coming out of me. And it was just like, it was just here. I remember I had like this white shirt, you know, I was like maybe in my early 20s. And I just wrote all the, I got a mark, I just wrote like faggot, joto, maricon, like all this shit that wow. I feel like that was slapped on me, you know what I'm saying? So I remember wearing it and I remember wearing that and I was so overwhelmed because I was like, I'm going to go to the store with this. And I had my daughter with me. 
You know, and that also was, but I feel like this shit was slapped on me as a little ass fucking boy. You know what I mean? And I didn't have this carry this shit. So I'm mean, wearing it and I didn't really like it. I didn't like the way it made me feel, but it's like, this is what I'm carrying it. So I'm going to put this shit, I'm going to fucking embrace this shit. That's you right. Know? You know, and um, yeah, it was, it was an empowering moment. I don't even know why I did that. But at that moment, wow, that that's shit. deep. Yeah, for real. I remember that shit. Like, you know, so now that I do shirts, one day I want to do shirts like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I want to get to you just did this shirt. Yeah. This, like, yeah, so y'all got a cop one over here. Woo! Yes. That's about dope. Me shaky too because but no, back to what you were moment. saying, but like, like yeah. with the with the comments, you know, like the comments of, there's so many people and I feel like they do things sometimes to get a response, to get like that, like to get a spotlight on themselves, you know? Mm-hmm. And I feel like we never, like at the beginning we used to want to, but like, but like, we kind of like no, I have held back. I have it in me. I have it in me. And I'm like, just stop. I'm mean, a human. Me. I have it in me to want to check a motherfucker. Let motherfuckers know what's up. Oh, you're a Leo, huh? I want to see the reality. But see, but see, again, I'm doing oh, this. Yeah. Me doing that, it's me going down. And when I want to go down, think I'm going to go back to the same level? I'm not. You know, it's like they're bringing me down. So for me, I'm like, fuck this. Express, like, why are you on social media and being all sensitive? This is a choice. You know what I mean? This is a choice right. that we're doing. We exactly. Can be, we can That's get true. Back up and just embrace ourselves and not want this. Bring the fuck out. Bring it. That's right. Express it. Throw your fucking shit over here. It will never affect me. So never, many, especially ever, in the Chicano ever. Latino yeah. community, they um, especially like the cholos, kind of the homies, you know. Yep. They they come for us a lot, and they're like, you know, like I don't know if I said it, but already, but they're like, you know, what's okay to 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 be who you are, but just don't dress the way you do. Well, dress see, like you're was gay. A, that was a social media. And you know, I'm like. What's the point of that? I mean, like, I never got a manual on how to dress, you know? Like, to me, this is not something that I, like, it's not like a, it's not me trying to, like, be a part. This is something that, like, I, since I was young, like, well, I you always kind of dressed mm-hmm. that way, you know? Yeah. And I used to want to be part of the gangs. I got three dots on my face, but I felt like I grew up out of that. I mean, it became more of a drug thing for me. And it's like now, it's like, it's just a part of who I am. This is the way I dress, the way I feel comfortable. Yep. Like, if I dress something else, it, that would be an act for me. That would be something that I'm pretending Come on. to be, you know? Come on. So I'm just going to be who I am, and whoever embraces but me, embraces people me. People feel like, like Adam or myself are making Cholos look bad. Like, we don't represent everybody. They're making themselves look bad. No, no, the, but the yeah. thing yeah. is, just like, the thing is, it's like, uh, when the people want to say, we don't claim them. You don't have to claim, you don't even know me. It's like if somebody, white does a white man does something wrong, that, that, so now we got to see every white man like that? Exactly. Like, that's mm-hmm. fucked up. Mm-hmm. Like, why would you even think like that? You know, I always say it on my YouTube, it's like, don't claim me. Like, long family don't play me. That's so, all good. So we have a reaction channel. So we always put like like Mexican flag in reaction, you know? Yeah. And so like a lot of <laughs> Mexicanos, they, they say, take that flag off. You don't even deserve that. And I'm like, <laughs> because I don't know Spanish because he knows Spanish. It's a little weird, but he knows Spanish. You know? <laughs> You're like but, me then. Like, yeah. Hey, I barely, know, Spa- I barely yeah. know Spanish too. You yeah. know what I mean? I grew up in Santa Ana. You know, I'm a Chicana and... My dad's side of the family, they grew up in Jalisco. When I was smaller, they used to talk to me in full Spanish. And I used to speak Spanish a lot when I was younger. But when I grew up, I was just a b- bunch around a bunch of, I guess you could say, Mexican American people who spoke English. Yeah. You know what I mean? So the time that I started getting older, that's what embedded in me was just the English, the English, the English. But, you know, we're Latinos, always going to be in our blood no matter what. You know what I mean? As long as we embrace it and be who we are, that's all that matters. Yeah. Doesn't matter if we don't speak full Spanish. You know, yeah. we're we're yeah. still we're still I family, mean, like, man. I really try, like, yeah. I'm a server, so I like I have to take people's orders in Spanish, and I will push my Spanish. I don't care how stupid I sound, you know. That's right. And they always embrace me, so it's like I'm trying. Because you get like, past it, honey. Yeah, I, I hate the, the whole Mosavo thing because Adam will definitely be right there in that level. But Adam works like he he don't got no papers. He took care of Natalie and myself for years. You know what I'm saying? Without him. Our daughter wouldn't be where she's at. You know what I'm saying? So I feel the fact that they want to discredit um, anybody like Adam, where Adam don't know Spanish like that, but this is a Mexican man right here. Try to discredit him. Shit. It will <laughs> never. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, I worked two jobs, you know, and, and I took care and of us for Adam so many does, years. He prides himself. Like, he works, like, with a pace. Because we worked together a lot of years. So I will see him, and I will always match his energy. That's you know, right. As a server, he's been doing serving for a long time. Anybody can say it. No, everybody will talk about Adam, and he's he does it with pride. You know That's I mean? right. And I always respected that because I used to do like little jobs that I used to feel like that I would do. I feel like man, I shouldn't be doing this because I'm already pushing thirties. But Adam always showed me that he took he pride himself what he did. He showed me like you know what? There's something to be embarrassed. 
But it's, it takes it's care of my family. It, it pays my bills. Like, why would I be embarrassed of that? But see, where yeah. I come from, it's like when you're 30, you should already be having a career. The fuck you still in Starbucks? It's my career. I'm a but server. But like, why are you, you know what I'm saying? So Adam doing that, it was just like, he showed me and then we throw that on our daughter now. It's like, whatever you do, you do it, you do it with, with pride. You know what I'm saying? And Adam is the one that taught us that. You know what I mean? Nice. Adam, yeah. you been, so how long have you been serving Bobby? For how long? Damn, I worked for, for Chili's for 11 years. Already. He's still the baddest motherfucker. Woo! That's right. A red robin chili. You, none of your service can compare it to Adam. That's here. right. It's all about service yeah. with me. Yeah. Customer service. Yeah. That's right. And then yeah. we'll bow down because it's the truth. Yeah, <laughs> That's I worked, what I'm talking I've been, about. Uh, serving, I started when I was like 19 serving. I'm 31 now. Okay. So I've been doing serving, so bartending. Serving. I'm bartending now. Yeah. So you know what's weird is that I tried bartending. Like, That's a level. You I tried know. bartending it's, three different times and I can't get into it. It's oh, different, it. yeah. It's it's uh. Because I mean, it also depends sports. too where you're at. Like for me, I'm at I've bartend at Flux. Okay, uh, okay. I've been that, doing, that yeah. would be different. I was over here talking about. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, but yeah, honestly, I feel like um, what I like is that it it builds my social like skill. Yeah, I used to be very shy. Like I could not oh, yeah. look people in the eye. Like I oh, really? would get like super anxiety walking into just like the mall or the market. Like oh, wow. I was like on another level. Um, but that, like, I pushed myself to, like, give the best I could. To. You have to, yeah. If you want to make that money, you got to, like, connect with people, you know? And everyone's maybe, different. Yeah, I think maybe if I worked inside of a bar, it would be different. But serving food and having to give customer service. And thinking about the and, other servers. And thinking about other people's drinks that I have to do, it's too much for me, you know? I feel like, I, I to me, at the end of the day, I like to interact with my table and I like to give them a, a service you know nice you go to, you I love that oh, and you good. want to give an experience you know? we gotta go dip yeah. the chilies after this right. Right. Robin you come through I'll take care of you heck yeah. yeah so are you still serving now yeah do you get a lot of people like from the internet oh, recognizing yeah. you wait yeah <laughs> yeah so so for a minute me and him worked at Red Robin together in Northridge you know and um it was kind of like when things were kind of starting to kind of take off a little bit and and people would be like, hey, can we take pictures with you? And I'm like, yeah, three notes here, or, or vice versa. You know, they'll hit him up, and he'd be like, Adam's here. So we'll take pictures. We'll be in the lobby. We'll have, like, em other empl other people that we work with take pictures for us with them. You yeah, know? I thought I could be shy. So. Wow. Yeah. Wait, hold on. And you know what's funny is that so many people, like, if you see us on social media, you're going to see three notes out there. And I'm kind of more reserved. But in public, like when you when you first meet Trino, they're gonna see that Trino's more reserved and I'm out there. You know, we just were opposites when it comes to being um, behind a camera in our home and being like in public in front of people. Yeah. Wow, I'm, I'm more of a people person. I've been serving people longer. You know, nice. So, so yeah, that's kind of helped me in that area. You know, nice. nice. That's beautiful, nice. guys. Wow, that's beautiful. I have a question for you guys. So, with all this, you know social media going on and all attention and I'm pretty I'm pretty sure there's a lot of doors that are going to be open for you guys but do you guys have like a plan together like with this going on like do you feel like you guys both could get into like acting or I don't know some comedy stuff like where do you feel like you could take this to you know to the next step do you feel like you could do you have a plan do you have a goal I definitely want to do acting I definitely like to express myself in any level. See, I'm an artist, so I see myself being like, you know, maybe I have a certain look and I love like the really weird art. So if I can be used, cause I'm bald and I feel like if people can use me in that, so I definitely see, but um. So, so there's these people that hit us up. They kind of do what exactly what he's talking about. Like kind of the weird kind of like art. You mean that kind of like real shit art, you know? Okay. So, like, like high fashion. Yeah, high fashion. Nice. Kind of yeah. So they hit us up and they want us to do a photo shoot with him. So, yeah, it's gonna happen. Naked, nice. Throw paint on me. Woo! Like, I love stuff like that. Like, yeah. I feel like I have it in me and I, Very expressive. I, I Free-spirited. I was really yeah. little, I like to express myself. Like, I feel like I have it within myself. And, you know, for a long time, I, I didn't. And I feel like I was suffocating, you know what I mean? So, um, and, I, and of course, I feel like where I'm at, being an advocate, being voiceful, and, and connecting with other people, and then they're letting me know how they feel, and we can heal each other. That's amazing. That's something that... I used to see, you know, see myself doing like being an advocate, just be able to speak. And, yeah, you, know, you are. I didn't see myself mm -hmm. like that. I feel like I was just a regular, you know, basic motherfucker, you know, but I feel like, you know, we all have something to say. And of course. Have, and I think it's beautiful, you know what I mean? So I think that everybody uh, reminded me that I do have something to say. What I have something to say, it is beautiful and it's important. Of course. Because I feel like I was just like, man, I'm another fucked up motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? That's the way I felt for a long time after a while. Because for a long time, like I said, I was trying to voice myself and it wasn't being heard. So then I just figured out a way to heal myself. 
But like, you know, being in the position that I am now, I think it's everything's timing, you know what I mean? Yep. Yeah, it's all in so the right weird. timing. It may yeah. not be your timing, but it's going to be in the universe's timing. Like yeah. I said, when one door shuts, another door opens, exactly. you know? So at the right time, it will happen. Yeah. And I, and I can have an energy of like, okay, everything needs to happen now. You know what I'm saying? Especially, uh, you know, us having our daughter as a, as a dancer, we, we always been on the go with her, like helping her with, um, she was competing, so we were going places, and then we took it to her, she, she can do commercial modeling and commercial, like, dancing. So, um, now seeing her, she's always teaching me, too, you know what I mean? Beautiful. She's always teaching us, like, always something. She's 20 years old, happy birthday to our baby. She's turned 20 yesterday. Woo! Happy, happy birthday! Natalie, right? Natalie. Beautiful! Natalie. Woo! Look at that! Hey, hey, bring the lighter. (laughs) No, I like the Clippers though. There's a lot of uh, Laker fans that don't like. I grew up watching basketball. I played basketball. Oh wow! So my background is is I I mean I have family members that are like diehard Clipper, but don't like the Lakers, and then vice versa. Need to be heard too, because you as a gay man, right? Yeah, yeah. Like you're you're into you're good at sports. That's beautiful, you know what I mean? Because a lot of people think you're gay. You're not you're not good at sports, you know what I mean? Yeah, that a is a stereotype. Like that. That, that is they, a stereotype. They tripping. Sure. Yeah, we people. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, I grew up with three older brothers, and my dad was a sports coach, so I they kind of like forced me to. Yeah, do yeah. It. I was really into like uh, artistic stuff, acting, theater, um, well, something all of that. Something within yourself made you want to do it. And, and how long were you doing it again? Like, um, I started playing. Uh, oh, I did like I started with football, and then I went to basketball, and basketball I like fell in love with. Um, because I like the competitiveness, I, I like that. the sportsmanship, and what? it teaches you a lot, like mentally, like how to, how to like be on a team, yeah, yeah, yeah. how to treat others, um, right. good sportsmanship. My dad like instilled that in me, and he was like really hard on me. Uh, he did not go easy on me, so I had it like the hardest on the team, but it paid <laughs> off. He had a lot of experience coaching, and he knew how I was, so I'm more sensitive compared mm. to like my other brothers, so. He wasn't like and I think cussing is me. So beautiful, sensitive is not weak. Yeah. Know? Oh, it's strength. It's yeah. opposite actually. Yeah. Because you gotta. But the man you know? would think that that's weak. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. Find it, man. Find it, so you can yep. be a better man. That's right. You know what I'm Especially if you got children, find that sensitive shit inside of you. Yep. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And when somebody tells me something, I just feel. Yeah. I could feel a lot. Yeah. yeah. So that's right. I think he knew that about me too, and like he. He saw that in me, and um, he pushed me in the way that I needed, so it That's worked good. out, you know. That's good. But, uh, I love that. yeah. Yeah, so. so. how are you with your dad now? It's beautiful. Oh, we're good. Uh, my dad is, like, super supportive uh, with social wow. media stuff. I started working with this brand, um, and he's giving me, like, all this input. He's I like, shoot that. the video like That's this. Beautiful. He's like people's attention span is only seven seconds now so cut your video and he's very like hey, this okay. dude yeah and he's 65 he's 65 thank um, you dad thank hey, you shout out to, shout out to <laughs> yeah yep he Good. didn't even us all the input but they're super supportive they own a halloween warehouse called halloween depot uh, so they do a lot of social media content. Hey, They're very good. Too, yeah, you good. Yeah. Hey, something about home just gives me such a peace. <laughs> you guys yeah. um I love scary movies too. Oh, me too. What's your favorite? Oh man, um, I, I like to me I like um, possession type of movies. You know? Oh my god, I like I love those. <laughs> freak me out so much. I haven't seen it. I want to watch no, it. Wow. Okay. I'm excited. <laughs> we, we we did a review to it. I'm super excited. Woo, we're going way back over yeah. here. I love it. I think the movie that I like is um World Z by like, you know Reference. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that one's I pretty like cool. That. There's something about that movie that just um, it's so like. It's, I love like zombie movies. Me too. Yes. Uh, 28 Days Later. 28 oh, weeks. That, that one's oh, good. My God, that's one of my favorites. Like 28 line. weeks. I think there's like an Asian one. Yes. Uh, train, to, oh. train to Busan. Oh, change, yeah, yeah, that, right? that's the one you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, that's so a good one too. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> one. Well, it has to have like a, there's just so many. Yeah. There's a lot. I just, I think those are like realistic to me. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like that can be well, possible. If you go to, if you go with, to Skid Row, that's literally it. <laughs> yeah. Kind of thinking yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yup. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Like, <laughs> taking over you. Halloween Depot. Uh, so. Oh, we're gonna, we're gonna check, check it out. Yeah. Woo, we're, we're gonna have some that. fun in yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, be that'll be fun. Beautiful. That'll be fun. And you know how you guys were talking about family. You know, you're talking about your dad. How about you guys? How, you know, can you tell us a little bit about your family? I don't know, your your mother, your dad. Do they support you guys? How do they see it? And, um, you know, just, uh, just give give us a little bit, you know, of that if, if you want. So for me, um, um, my mom's... <laughs> smile? Oh, smile. I know! 
I'm so glad you asked that. No, 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 no. For me, I feel like with my family, like my family's a little more supportive. You know, um, they support me for just being me because I bring like love and I just bring like I'm never like I'm never like an issue with them. You know, and, and at the beginning when I first came out to my mom when I was 20 years old, I think 20, and um, she kind of like it, my dad was crying. That was before he passed away. He was crying at a table. And he was, and my mom was like saying like she had nothing but daughters because I was her only son, and so like it was it was an issue. And that day that I talked to her about it, I moved out. I moved out into a bad situation. And when I came back into her home, um, um, she says I would rather you be here than than to be out there when I I don't know what's going on with you. And That's since right. that day, she's always embraced me and she's always showed me love. And 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 until this very day, she still tells me like she wants me to get it right with God, but she doesn't throw it down my throat. She just allows me to be me, and she says, "You know what? I'm always praying." She embraces her. Beautiful. Beautiful. And and yeah. and I always tell her, you know what? Three no has been the best thing that's ever happened to my life. Like before that, like any relationship, girl or guy, I, I always was like really bad into drugs. I was always really bad into things, you know. And this is the first time that I ever felt stable in my life, and I felt like um, beautiful. Like um, someone's brought me like completion because I've always felt like I was broken, and I was like there was so many parts to me that were missing. And he's completed that. Love is love. <laughs> Woo! Yes, fire. So, so you know, we, we did a documentary with Matt, and he he just posted like a piece of the documentary, and it's talking about like, you know, if my family doesn't celebrate me, why would the world celebrate me? And I saw a comment that somebody said like, why would we celebrate gay? But what I meant is that my family doesn't celebrate Trino. You know what I mean? Maybe I'm not like my dad. I'm a different type of boy. I'm a different type of man. That needs to be celebrated. They don't celebrate that. So how am I supposed to be the best I can be? You that's know what right. I mean? Out in this world. So that's what I meant. You know what I mean? When I don't, you know, gay is what the everybody gives me. But I don't walk around saying, hello, my name is Trino, and I'm gay. I don't say that. Exactly. That's just slap on me because of my sexuality or because of the person I am. But, You're just Trino. Yeah, I'm that's Trino, it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So so that's what I mean, celebrating. Celebrating Trino. His, her, his family celebrates Adam. They don't celebrate his gayness. But they celebrate Adam because he's here. You know, he's an amazing, beautiful man. And good thing he's not like his his dad because his dad was a straight man. He's a good man, but he struggled. You know what I'm saying? You know, my I know my definitely my mom would prefer me to be you know a straight man that's with the wife that's drinking every fucking day, probably like fucking cheating on her. But he at least he's not sinning. He's not a faggot. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? I definitely my dad my mom would prefer me to be a fucking drug addict than a faggot. You know? When I, mean? I first met him. Um... There was one time that I, he had kind of like snuck me into his room, you know? And um, I remember his dad called him out there, and I think it was because I was smoking a cigarette. And we don't and, smoke, and so he, he smelled knew. it. So yeah. he's okay. like, I was like, he didn't know what was going on with him, but he kind of. He, he was around as a friend. But there yeah. was a different type. You know, they I had guy friends. This was a different type of guy friendship, you know? And they felt it. And, and I, heard <laughs> his dad, I heard his dad they say, ain't. I heard his dad say, I would rather you be a, a, a drug addict than be a fag. And if I find out that you're gay, I'm going to fucking kill you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, well, my dad, you know, my dad, I think we're cool. You know, he doesn't know how to take it still. We never. But you know what? To be honest, they they, they, they accept me. They they, they, they embrace welcome me into my home, to their home, you know? And um, will they ever come to my home? They have not, you know? But, um, and it's been already like 18 years. Yeah. And they've never once. I mean, well, one time they did, you know? And, um, but they, they've always like embraced me. They always made me feel welcome. So I can't really be mad at it, you know? And, yeah, and see, and with my parents, I'm really expressive. Anybody that's around me, I'm really expressive. I talk to my mom about, you know, how I feel, how I used to feel. And the thing is, what I realized with my parents as a parent is that they have their own situation. You know, they don't know how to bring out to the surface their struggles. So how could they fix me? And that's what I realized. And that's why I love them. I embrace them. And I left it where it's at. They're not going to heal me. They can't heal me because they can't heal themselves. You know what I mean? And I love my mom. And... And that's where she's at, and you know, I talk to my mom about our things, and you know, I will cry, but they don't know how to handle that. It's too much for them, and I am too much, and I am a lot, and I'm gonna continue to be a lot. You know what I mean? Yeah. Until the day I die, I'm not gonna stop. You know what I mean? And so people can see that, man, Trino's over here crying. He, yeah, I'm gonna cry. I'm strong like that. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna show my daughter how, not how to suffocate with her feelings. You know what I mean? Why would you do that? You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. that's what it is. You know. So, and I have I have a duty for the young me. To, to, to let him embrace who he is now. He cried every time he got his ass beat because he cried. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to cry now. Who's going to beat my ass now that I'm crying? That's right. You know right. what I'm saying? I don't care what people say about me if I cry. That's I'm right. Crying. I'm in a crying right now. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> 
What's yep. Up, wow, that's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, like you said, you know, like you're just embracing you. You're just being you. And that takes me back, you know, this year will be the third year, will be three years that I'm with my girlfriend. And she was my first everything, like first person that I, you know, introduced my mom to, my family, you know, and I've been with women since I was, woo, I remember since I was like seven. But like secretive, like not like, like I mean, I was I was a young kid, and I remember being being in a school bus. I would kiss girls. I'm like, what am I doing? Like, for real, I was like, <laughs> it, I was. Man, I had a lot of girlfriends, anyways. Um, so I just remember like, like all these years. I'm 30 now, you know, and I've been with I've been with girls since I was seven, and it's not like seven? yeah, since I was seven years old. I remember I remember when I was at my apartment complex, we had a Halloween party. All the little kids would dress up, and I remember looking at this girl, right? And she was wearing, like, a Cinderella dress, and I just yeah, had this, I'm, like, I'm yes, I had this, like, this <laughs> zoom on her, you know, and, like, this static, and I was like, that girl is gorgeous. And oh, I, <laughs> that's what I'm, <laughs> that's what I'm saying, <laughs> you know, and, you know, and now, you know, that I'm older, and I'm embracing myself, and all those years that I had girlfriends, I never told nobody, because I always felt, even with my family, with my mom being a Christian woman, you know, loving God, and I always knew that my mom loved me, don't get me wrong, I've always knew it, it's just, how do I come out to her, how do I talk to her, was she, oh my gosh, I don't love you no more, how can you do this, but recently, when I met my girlfriend, I told my mom, you know, which was three years ago, I'm like, mom, I got to tell you something. I remember just one day, right? One day I just had this urge. I'm like, you know what, Candy? You got to tell your mom. You got to tell your mom who you are because by the end of the day, I want my mom to know where I'm at. If I'm in, a, in, in trouble, if I'm with a woman, I want her to know that, mom, I'm not safe. I need you to help me. You know, and I want that relationship with my mom. I want that connection with her. I want her to know my whereabouts. You know, I don't want to keep hiding from her because if I'm hiding all these things from her, she's not going to know what happened to her daughter. Yeah. So... I just had this urge. I remember com coming from L.A. I called my mom. I was like, Mom. And then she's like, yeah. She's like, what happened? I'm like, I have something to tell you. What, 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 what happened? Every time we say that, I have something to tell you. What, 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 what happened? You know, we always think. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, we, yeah. We, we feel that energy with each other. She's like, what? Tell me, how what happened? I'm like, ah, I like girls. Me gusta la panocha. Yep. <laughs> yep. I, 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 <laughs> Yeah, you know, I told her, I like girls, I like women. Okay, I knew that. Hey, I was like, you were seven, she knew. I was like, what? She's like, I, I always knew. I know, right? She's like, I always knew that you liked women. I was like, just to let you know that I'm with Adi, which is my girlfriend. I, she's my girlfriend. She's like, I had a feeling, you oh, know, that you were with her. And I, I was like, Shout out to your mama. oh my gosh. And... I just started crying in the car. I'm like, all these years, you know, like I've been hiding this and not trying to hide it, but it was just kind of difficult for me to come out because I didn't want, I didn't want my mom to be that type of person. Like, oh, I'm going to abandon my child yeah. and you're this and you're that, you know? And I knew she loved God. I love God too. God changed my life. Yeah. He changed my life when I was 15. I was yeah. a drug addict. Yeah. You know, I've been sober from crystal meth yeah. um, for like 11 years now. Woo. And God did change my life. God's real. I feel him. I see him, you know, and like I praise him till this day. And I always told God, no matter what I do in my life, I'm always going to praise you. I'm always going to love you. And I am so blessed as a person right now because everything that I'm blessed with in my life is because of God. Yeah. Everything that I've been through is because of God. I feel him, you know, and he shows me favor and just being out there, you know, and being who I am and introducing my mom to my girlfriend and my family, like I'm free. I feel more free now. I feel like I could be me. I could be Candace. I could yeah. be Candy. I don't have to like, oh my gosh, what are they going to think? What are they going to say? You know? And when you're like that, you feel powerful. You feel oh, unstoppable. Yeah. Like you said, I just had to embrace it. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. I just had to tell people, this is who I am. You know, and this is who I'm going to be, you know, and people, when you show people the real you, they love you, yeah. they respect you, they cherish you. That's why the way that you guys are, you got that connection with people because what you've been through, people are going through as well yeah. and they connect with you with that. Oh my gosh, Latinos tatted. He got a boyfriend, man. You know what? I'm going to come out to my family because Latinos Especially in the Latino culture, man, you got to be with the man. You got to be married. You got to clean the house. You're a woman. You got to have kids. You know how, how, how much of that I come across? 
especially being a tattoo artist, people opened up to me, you know, about being a Latina. Man, my mom wants me to get married to this guy. I'm not even happy. They want me to have kids. I'm 20 years old. You know what I mean? We got to break that. You know, this is a new generation now. We're in 2023. You know, we don't got to be like that no more. We got to be ourselves now. We got to stop doing what other people want us to do. We got to stop doing what other, you know, people want us to be. You know, if you want to be this person, be that person. Not because they tell us, you know, but we got to we gotta be because of who we are, you know, as a person. So just by you telling me that story, you know, like, I remember at that time, like, it's true. It's it, These are real things. These are real feelings. These are, these are real experiences that we go through, you know? And I'm so happy that we're able to talk about this because people don't talk about stuff like this. You know, people don't. They want to hide it, yeah. especially with social media. Everything looks all good on the outside, but in the inside, people are hurting. I always say, I never want to paint a fucking picture. Like, For real. I don't even like, like, we just took a picture, you know, uh, you know, our daughter, and I feel like I wanted to keep it organically who we are because some people, like, it just means a lot to take a picture and everything looks fucking fake, you know what I'm saying? That's right. No, fuck that. You know, I wanted to keep that shit real with the... Um, hat. Like, you said that, you know, you found you were with Jesus, you gave your life to God, right? Mm-hmm. And um, he helped you get out of things. Like, how did you feel like when um, um when you like started coming out as as gay? Cause like I I went um um I gave my life to God like for like maybe like two years. Like I was like in ministries and I did all that. And he helped me get out of mess. And um I was going hard. Like my family was like seeing me as like I used to wake up like hey let's get ready for church let's yep. do all this and that. Mm-hmm. And then the day that I gave my life to God actually like I really was I was all in. Um I had meth in my pocket. And I went to the restroom and I flushed it down the toilet and, and, and it changed me, you know? I felt like that that strong presence of God in my life. Oh my life. gosh. And, and it was so beautiful. And for so like for two years, like I really went hard with it. And then there was this time that where I just was I just felt like I just couldn't do it anymore. Like it was like hard for me. Like the the temptation of going back to math and it was just a lot of things were going on in my life at that time and it made me fall back into that, you know? And um, I remember, like, there was a, like, I used to be tweaking with some friends, and I used to be, like, talking about nothing but God and how God changed my life. I'd be hitting the pipe and be like, God is so amazing. Like, he's done so much good things into my life, you know? And then there came a t- time after that that I couldn't pray anymore. I couldn't pray anymore because I always was told when you backslide, like, you are nailing God back onto the cross. You, you, you know, you brought him off of it because you gave your life to him, and he's just here, here with you. But you nailed them back, you know? And I remember, like, till this very day, like, do I pray? I don't pray. I don't feel like, I mean, of course, like, what, say if I was in a plane and, and it was crashing down, the first thing I'm going to run to is, like, God, please help me. You always do that when, when it's in your time of need, you know? Yep, like you always exactly. Wanna, like, we always want to cry out. Even the ones that don't believe, they're yep. always going to cry out, God, please help me. Yep, you know? exactly. But it's like, it brings me shame, I feel like, sometimes, you know, like, the the... The life I live because for so many years until like I said my mom still she loves Jesus you know and it's just it just it's just I struggle with that sometimes you know feeling like where am I gonna go when I well, see when and I that's a problem with a lot of people that are Christian or Catholic or any religion they feel like they want to discredit I always took my daughter to church and she was little and I remember going and and then I saw friends were like you're in church what are you doing here and that would shrink me so much wow like how dare you discredit the relationship you know I have a sister that to this, to this time right now, she don't speak to me. You know, we're like nine months apart, and I love her so much, and I miss her always. And she took, she, let, let me, let me not even talk about it because <laughs> that's gonna take. But um, so um, yeah, I feel like people have discredited, you know, my relationship with God, and um, I would never be in Adam's level. I always cherish my relationship with God, but I would go to um, Christian church sometimes, and I had, I will have a demeanor to me, very defensive, you know what I mean. But I would go because. I needed to go because of within my soul, and I wanted to give this to my daughter to believe in something higher. And then now that she's older, she can believe in whatever she needs to believe. But uh, how dare for other humans that are walking here to discredit me? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? You know, uh, Jesus was walking with the sin. Period. Prostitutes. That's yeah. it. Yep. Like, learn that. He hung out with them. Yep. Like, you know I mean? Drug addicts. Like, you're, you're good. I don't need to be here for you. I need to be here for the ones that are sick. You exactly. Know? That's what doctors are here for. Like, exactly. Like, you see me, I'm very expressive. I tell people how that makes me feel. And if another human is telling you how I feel, that you're trying to fix this because at the end of the day, at the end of this life, you want to go to heaven. In heaven, you're going to have to face God, and God's going to tell you, you hurt Trino. He told you you were hurting him. And who are you? You should have just hugged him and embraced him. Because God and is you love. You abandoned him. 
I've been abandoned by so many people just because I'm, I'm dead to people. I'm very alive. You know what I mean? That's right. You know, it's, I want the people that I'm talking about, I want them every day in my life. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And here I am. It's like, you know, um, I hurt all the time because I miss my sister. Yep. I miss her always. She was my protector. She protected me. You know, she always protected me. And um, she was, the, when she we were little, um, she will, um, she will be in front of me when she will be bullied. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I remember when she was telling me, she would tell me that I was going to go to hell. I was like, Vanessa, don't do this to me. And then she would say that to my daughter, like, your, your dad's going to go to hell. How are you going to turn on my daughter? That's the only thing I have. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, Vanessa, I miss you, girl, all the time. But I don't want it no more. It's too long now. She took her all her kids away from me. They call me Bobby. Yeah. And I miss them all the time. Man. Yep. You know, it's like, it's hard for me, man, because, you know, um, and she hides from me. She hides from me because she knows, she knows that the way I feel. And she knows that she can't face me. That's right. You know, but um, I, I don't really let her make me so harsh and an angry person because for so many years, um, you know, I, I have this pain that's never going to go away. And I realized that. You know what I'm saying? Get over it. Get over it. I can't. I love my sister. Yeah. I love her, man. Yeah. You know, it's just in my soul, you know? And I'm embracing that now. But I'm going to let it be what it is. And the anger is going to go away. You know what I'm saying? I yeah. feel like for so long, like, he's been dealing with this. Like, you know, we've been together for 18 years. And um, he doesn't know how to let it go. You don't. How do you let it something becomes, go that's inside your soul, It becomes, it becomes soul, anger man. for him. Then maybe and I don't know sometimes how to I feel like, sometimes, like, I'm, I'm like, I, like, it's thrown on me. Like, he, he puts his anger on me because he's going through this. Like, sometimes, like, just, just for random, like, so certain things happen or people bring up certain topics or things happen with his family. And he doesn't, he can't express it to them because they don't give a fuck, you know? And I feel like it, it kind of gets thrown on me because, like, he, um, I'm, I'm the closest thing he has, you know? And I get it and I understand it sometimes, you know? Of course. But this is some real shit, man. Like, of I course. Have, like, like that, that has really put me, you know, since I was young, I never really had nothing secure, you know? See, the, the story that I talk about my mom saying that, you know, she was. Uh, my mom got a lot of shit from my dad because it's like, it's tu culpa. It's tu culpa que tu hijo's así. So then my mom said, let me be more tough on him. But nobody really realized that I was being fucked with all the time in the streets, in school, with my dad, and my mom was my protector. So when she turned on me, that really fucked me up. It's like, no, not you. And I remember she was calling me, okay, te voy a cortar tu pinga. And I was covering my ears and I'm like, no, ma, tu no me digas eso. You are not the one. You're the one that protects me. Everybody's fucking with me. I can't even go to school. I'm a fucking idiot in school. How can you function when you're bullying every time? Call a faggot every fucking day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? My dad's constantly grabbing my fucking balls, screaming my fucking name, you know, just because I'm scared of a chicken. It, 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 it just was overwhelming for me to see, to f hear my mom being so, um, she became a bully to me, you know what I'm saying? And I was like, you're the only one that's protecting me, you know what I'm saying? So that, that's, that, that's what it was behind that story that I feel, you know, I think that with the documentary with Matt, you know, um, but yeah, but I love my mom now. I love, I always loved her, embrace her, but you know, she, we're very, we have a block because um, the way I would want to honor her, embrace her more, it's hard for me because it's not an equal thing, you know? Yep. She will always be ashamed of me. You know, and that's just what it is. And we're, we're yeah. open about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, so with my family, like, if my tia's ask, like, oh, como esta trino? She gets, like, anxiety. She gets offensive. Right away, she wants to protect me. But it's like, they're just asking how I'm doing. And I tell, I told her, like, if it, if nobody's nobody's really giving a fuck if I'm gay, you are the one with the issue. You know what I mean? Exactly. You know, so, but she don't know how to answer it. Mm -hmm. Oh, tiene mujer, como blah, blah, blah. But she could just yeah. like you're just like you're you're showing yourself, you know what I mean? Being all defensive and and want to act like I don't even exist, you know? It's like that one cartoon in Canto, the uncle that's being <laughs> hidden. Yeah. I don't hide. I'm not in no fucking wall, you know what I'm saying? So that's what they try to do with me, you know what I'm saying? Because I don't hide. I tell them all the time, you can you can look at me on on TikTok, on YouTube. I'm fucking expressive. So when you're trying to hide me. I'm over screaming to the world. So get with the program, That's mom. right, baby. Embrace yeah. Trino because the world That's is right. embracing me. That's you know right. What I'm saying? Yep. Well, however you want to do it. Rough around the edges, hot ass fucking mess. I am Trino and I'm that motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Yeah. So I let my mom know, but you know, you know, um, it's just what it is. I think that again, like before I started, she has her, her stuff that I feel like that she 
her the way she thinks about stuff is like ah, es el pasado. But it will make her such a beautiful woman if she would just remind herself how she was and what hurt her and bring it to the surface. She can be a better woman, a better mother, a better grandmother, you know, just a better woman, but she don't know how to do it, you know? Yeah, and you know what? It could be, honestly, too, like you said, it could be her trauma in the past. Yeah. You know, it could be whatever she went through in the past she because that's what I'm saying. So a lot of things that people do to us is because things were done to them. You know, if I was hurt in my past relationships, I'm going to pass that trauma to my partner, right? You know what I mean? And those are things that we have to really, really, really dig up. Like, why are they acting like this? You know, what is it? What's taking them off? What's triggering them? And I feel like even as us Latinos in the in our community, we need to talk about stuff like this because I noticed even in my family, we don't talk about a lot of stuff. But then a lot of stuff co keeps coming up that I'm like, wow, now I know why. Or now I know, you know, why that person was like that, you know? So we need to start digging up stuff like that from our past, our trauma, our hurts. And it goes down generation to generation and if i don't break this trauma right now everything that i've been through in my life then i'm going to be passing this on to my girlfriend i'm going to be passing this on to my kids and then my kids are going to be passing it on to their kids so we need to start you know breaking break, yeah. breaking those barriers breaking those boundaries you know digging stuff up we need to start talking about things letting things out if we have to cry it out throw it out whatever it is we got to do go on the floor hit the floor do what you got to do to let everything out mm -hmm. you know even like my therapist she tells me mija you've been through a lot she tells me your life story is not a lifetime story because that's what i used to think of my story i've been yeah. through a lot in my life and she's like mija you're not, you're not a lifetime story you're a blockbuster movie hey. she's like hey i'm like hey girl that's why you're my therapist man you know Woo! for real man no she is amazing i've known this woman for seven plus years thank god for blessing her in my life recently she came back into my life for a reason you know, so I just thank God for that. But but you know what, guys? Like, you know, people hurt us. Hurt people hurt people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? And I feel like it's so powerful that everything that you've been through, that you guys been through, you're still laughing. You're still smiling. Oh, oh, you're still me. throwing off that power. Look at, look at, man. You know, be getting put down because of your gay, because people were saying words to you, things that you went through in school with your family, with your mom, with your dad. And look at. Look, look at who, who, who rose up. You know, it was you guys. You're yeah. still rising. You're still shining. You're yeah. still smiling. Yeah. And the people that are saying stuff, look at them. They're so <laughs> miserable. You know, they're still, they're, you're in their minds every day when they wake up. You know, when they go to sleep. Like, man, how can you live like that? And you guys are really living. Yes. Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> For me, when I was younger, I didn't see myself, uh, I didn't see myself as an adult. Because I didn't, I didn't see myself through nobody. So I was like, how can I be a regular, like a dog, like a grown man? I don't see, I can't relate, you know what I mean? So it was really hard for me to see myself. So um, this is why I celebrate life because um, to see myself and to see my daughter being 20 years old, I'm wow. like, and to see my daughter being so so beautiful and, and smart, she's a part of us. So and she showed me what I had in me, but I didn't have it in me to bring it out because I didn't have the, people didn't give me the tools and, and the love, the confidence. And the confidence, you know what yep. I'm saying? Yeah, so I, it, that's why I celebrate life. But even though a lot of people think that, you know, I, I will always be hurt. But I feel like that brings me to a level of, like, it puts my feet where it needs to be. And it makes me be more compassionate. And I love it. Even if people think, like, he's a mess. I am. He's, a, you know, he's broken. And I am broken. But I'm so fixed, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like, you know, sometimes I feel like people just want to always stay smiling. Because that's really going to give the people, like, no, I cry whenever I want. And I'm going to be hurt. And I'm going to... You know, I just feel like it's a human thing. You know what I'm saying? And I just learned that, at least for me, it doesn't it doesn't give me weakness. You know what I mean? That's right. It's part of who I am. Of course. Yeah. You know, what I, mean? I feel like now that we're older, we can feel like, you know, uh, our little us was back then. But that will always be within us. Mm -hmm. It's that seed that you can you have to get it out. And maybe water it a little different, you know what I'm saying? You know, water yeah. it, plant yeah. that seed. I appreciate that. My garden's that. beautiful now. That's right. <laughs> There's some weeds in there. Of course. I pick it out next day, it's still there. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, did I just pick you out? And, and it's still there, but I'm like, okay. 
Let me just let me water that bitch too. See, <laughs> as long as you're realizing exactly. Oh my god! And I was just talking about this watering your garden. Every day we have to water our garden. Yeah. I just did a little a little reel on Instagram like a day ago. We need to water our garden every day. There's gonna be weeds, but you know what? And able for us to go and move forward, we got to attend to those weeds Period. because if we don't attend to those weeds, those weeds are gonna grow and sprout in over time. Yeah. Just like with our life, if we don't attend to that trauma, that hurt, that pain, whatever that we're going through, it's gonna get worse they're gonna sprout they're gonna sprout in our job in our careers in our relationships within ourselves so we need to start picking those weeds and as long as you realize that those weeds that you need to get picked we're gonna be good just like that flower as long as you're picking those weeds it's gonna keep growing and shining you're gonna keep watering it the sun and and when that storm when that storm comes boom that flower is gonna sprout and, and there's some gardening a little bit of shit on it too right, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> doesn't, doesn't, doesn't yep in manure yep yeah, right. exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> 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 I love it that's right that's right that is so awesome i want to say too i appreciate you guys like to be raw and authentic like that I appreciate personally that makes me like that inspires me to like oh, that to show my emotion i have a lot of i have a hard time like showing my emotion when i'm uh sad or like crying and stuff and mm. i kind of had that instilled in me where i feel like i need to be strong i need to be Man, strong but yeah and it's like i don't I feel i feel weaker when i'm holding it in because then i feel like i'm not put together yeah. and i can't express what i need to say and that to me that's the most powerful thing you can do is express what you're feeling and in the moment like you deserve that though you know what i mean you deserve, yeah you deserve to be free with all those feelings that you have and that's the way i feel you know what i mean like Amen. i feel like it um like you said that was given to me too and it was i was beat because of that you know mm. when i would cry because i used to have um I used to have, I, back then, nobody could really give a fuck about anxiety, but I used to have a lot of trouble sleeping. I will, I will like, get, I will just have panic attacks, you know what I mean? But then my mom thought that I was, like, haunted and shit. But in, re in reality, I was haunted because I used to be scared of the next day or ne or the future me, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So that would give me really anxiety, so I needed comfort. So uh, my parents just thought, he's a fucking chillon, pichi marica, you know what I mean? He's scared of the dark, but in reality, again, I was scared of my own self, you know what I mean? I used to hate school. School was so hard for me. You know, I, I grew up in Mexico a little bit, and my parents left us there for, like, almost a year, I think. That oh. was really hard for me, you know, because, you know, uh, I was so attached to my mom. So when my mom left us in Mexico, I remember being like, what the hell's going on? And talking to her on the phone. Who'd like, she leave you with? She lived with my grandparents. My grandparents didn't give a fuck about us. They didn't give a fuck, you know what I'm saying? It was it was just, you know, um, it was hard. Wow. You know, they, moved, they came here to make money, but... Uh, and then my mom was also struggling because it wasn't really her choice. So, you know, stuff like that just um, kind of fucks you up a little bit. You know what I mean? So yeah. I feel like, again, like you said, man, it's like a duty for you to embrace that. Like the way I feel like the way I see it, especially seeing my daughter, I feel like I want to I want to show her. I want to show her. I can tell her, be this and be that, be this. But I feel like I've learned to be like, I need to be an example. You know what I mean? Because, mm -hmm. like for, for example, she'll dance and be like, baby, full out when you dance. So then here I'm doing make, making videos like, well, I, let me show how to pull out. You know what I'm saying? Let me make that shit make sense. Let me back up what I said to her. You know what I mean? Mm. So I feel like she sees that, you know, going what you want, go get what you want, and only see that. I feel like she's seeing that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So again, that's when she teaches me, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, it needs to make sense for me. You know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah we could definitely learn a lot from the younger generation. She's I, taught I, me a lot, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I have uh, a lot of nieces and nephews. Their oldest, oldest is 22, youngest is two months and wow. most of them are like 10 well 10 9 7 5 two months 22 18 18 and wow. i you know just growing up with them like that they make me want to be a better person a better man wow. to show you know like and your family been, your, your like your brothers and sisters they embrace you to be around your kids uh your niece and nephews yeah they I do the, they do beautiful. yeah yeah um i've always had like growing up a lot of anxiety of who I wanted to be because I didn't share that about me until I was um, 17. And before then, I always knew who I was. I always knew I was gay. And I just had a lot of anxiety around that because I felt like I had to live a double life. Mm -hmm. Like I always in my head imagined me You're moving. Like a whole Hannah Montana. Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, you know, it. I, I was blessed at, to have a supportive family. And, you know, we have... Um, We've had our, our clashes here and there, it's but a it's a family thing. thing. Yeah, yeah you're, 
you're not a family until you have those like clashes and stuff but yeah but that that means a lot like you opening up and it just makes me think about like how short life is too and how this is all temporary like this is nothing is permanent who knows what's gonna happen tomorrow i think that it's still inside of me of like you know i can die tomorrow you know what i'm saying so like i feel like i have it i'm not leaving here of not fooling my life out you know what i'm saying i'm not holding back of what somebody is thinking of me and I'm not going to hold back of, for some one person that maybe hurt me mm. and let that person make me angry and bitter and unhappy. That's not fair for me. And that's not fair for the people that really want to be here with me. Like Adam, you know, my daughter, and like you guys, you know what I'm saying? People that are actually wanted to get to know Trino. I think it's unfair. And a lot of people do live their lives, you know, being so fucked up because of their parents that they, they stay in there and they get fucked up. And yep. just that's it their whole life, you know? Yep. Mm-hmm. I think that's so unfair for them, you know? Yep. Yeah. So I feel like my parents don't define me. It was just my parents. And like I said, they have their own trauma. You know what I'm saying? They have their own trauma. And that's what makes me, you know, love them and embrace them and yep. not be so hard on them. Because again, yep. my daughter's going to have her own story. You know what I'm exactly. saying? Exactly. And I, I have to be ready for that. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Yeah. And be, being open. Because I'm really open with her about, you know, and trying to listen to her. But... You can't fix everything, you know what I'm saying? No, you can't. Yeah. yeah. And she has her own story, and I love it. And I just wanted to always remind her, whatever pain you have, dance it, speak it, scream it. I'm here, you know what I'm saying? Like, as a parent, you don't want to be reminded that you fucked up on here. My daughter tells me, Baba, you did this, you know what I'm saying? And that made me feel like this. I want her, and it's not a good feeling, but it's like, that's your duty, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, let her tell you what she got to tell you. It's like, you know, baby, I'm so sorry, you know what I'm saying, that I came to you like that, or blah, 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 you know what I'm saying? And that's why I feel like, and I'm so honored to see that we're growing, you know what I'm saying? Like, to see her, our relationship is developing and growing, and she's seeing that I'm, um, I'm ready for change, you know? Because for a long time, she felt that, you know, that I was afraid to see her grow up, to see her maybe with a, a, a you know, potential boyfriend, when in reality, I'm excited for her to have a boyfriend. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, she's my baby. Like, I, you know, I'm the one that feathered her wings. I'm the one that, yep. at 14, she was driving. I'm the one that reminds her, like, stay cute, baby. <laughs> all fresh that's you know right i got her hair and nails in all the time you know what i'm saying yeah you know i'm not preparing for that but it's just like i want her i want that i'm excited for for that man that's gonna come to her and, and love her that's and right embrace her like yep. i love that you know what i'm saying that's I'm not beautiful that that. that's fucking weird i know some parents some men are like i don't want to talk about it for me, I'm like, hey, I'm excited. That's beautiful. That's great, yeah. yeah. Of moments That's... like that where they're like, where it gets real and like he wants to like, they just want to talk deep. And I don't know why I don't know how to do with shit like that. So I'm like, I'll find a reason to go upstairs. I'm like, that's shit. <laughs> I, I where I, did I, he go? Yeah, I'm like, taking shit. Like, yeah. Because she also has a very, you know, she's real, she has, a, she's a Leo. So she has also, oh, yeah. she has an opinion. And it's going to be her. That's you know good. I mean? mm. But she's really to herself. She's really reserved. But she does have something to say. She says it. And she's passionate. And I think it comes across aggressive sometimes. You know what I mean? They're so both I've, aggressive. So I've learned. But we, I can see that. And I love the fact that we're getting to a place of understanding one, one another. Because sometimes when you're dealing with people that come across aggressive, you don't want to even deal with them. You know what I mean? So that's why I love that she's understanding me. You know what I mean? That's beautiful. She knows she's not misunderstanding my aggressiveness. You know, uh... We're like aggressive, you know. She's understand. She's understanding that's coming from passion and love. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So I feel like that's that's what I'm seeing with her, and I love it. You know. That's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome guys. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and um, you know, I just want to go back to what you were asking me. What were you asking me about? Um, I think how you said about coming to God or. Or, I completely interrupted. I remember that. You sure did. Yeah, you sure did. <laughs> Shoot. That was our time. Let's get it. <laughs> no, so for me, I was just asking, like, how did you deal with that? Like, I feel like for me, like, it's hard for me to to go back, you know? I just feel like I just I just did too much already. And I feel like I feel like I love God and I want to build my own relationship with him, but in reality it's like I was so like taught in my mind that you're a sinner, you're going to go to hell. And I feel like I was always taught that this was a sin. Mm-hmm. So I feel like am I, I don't know where I'm going at the end of the day. You know? Every, I mean, everybody sins. You yeah. know, people, mm-hmm. you, I go down I the, I go down the I freeway. Like I go down the freeway and people flip me up. That's a sin. You know what I mean? Like even overeating is a sin. So I feel like even people that label them as Christians, I feel, because I used to be in church. I used to be full-on ministry. I did the youth. I did. I was an evangelist. I did outreaches. I was feeding the homeless. I did choir. I did 
you know, Spanish and English. And I was in a women's home. I was, I went through Victory Outreach. I don't know if you guys heard of them, but mm -hmm. I went in there before I was 18. And I'm going to tell you something. You know how you told me how you went to the restroom and you threw that pipe away? Well, check this out. When I was 17 years old that night, when I went out, I met, I, I had I a, I had a like, pipe. I no, <laughs> I had a, it was something like similar like that. I had a pipe and I met this guy, right? I met this guy online and he was like 40 something. Long story short, I went in the car with him and that night my sister told me, don't leave, don't leave. And something in my heart told me, don't leave. Something's going to happen. Don't go, don't go. But I was like, you know what? I ended up going. So when I went, when I went inside the car with the guy, we were going down Harbor in Fullerton out of nowhere, cops pulled up behind us. They pulled us over and the cop went next to my window. He told me just to let you know, we looked up this guy's information. He's wanted. And I was like 17 at the time. He's like 40 something. And I just hung out with him because I wanted to do drugs. I wanted to, you know, hit that pipe. But in the back of his mind, he probably wanted to do more. Yeah, he so that did. night, God saved my life. I don't know what was going to happen. He could have raped me. He could have like threw me on the yeah. side. And remember, my mom didn't know at that time at what I was doing. And I was going through drugs bad, really bad. I started when I was 15 years old doing crystal meth. That's, that's, I started. I, started I, I remember, man, I got introduced to it by my ex-girlfriend, you know, in L.A. And I remember I was doing it once a week. I was like, I got this. I started doing it every day, two times a day, three, four. And I ended up doing it every I'm day so for a week. Yes, that's that thing that, that could have um, got you and, yeah. and almost became become like part of you. Yeah, it, I was a different person. If I show you pictures of how I looked before, I looked like a ghost, like all skinny, yeah. all all whites. I every day I ate ice cream, I ate sweets, cookies. And I remember I was so out of it. I thought people were breaking into my house. You know, I saw things in my room. I saw demons. I saw people running back and forth of, of the train track. I saw so many mind. crazy stuff. I was going delirious. I thought people were following me when I was in a car. Yeah, like, dude, like who's following me? Dude, I, yeah, I, ha I was in bondage with the devil. You know, I was smoking the devil's drug. And anyways, so I remember that night I went to the police station. And during that time, I was like, almost 18. I started when I was 15. Throughout those years, my mom knew something was wrong with me, but she didn't know what it was. I went to the police station and the girl asked, the girl told me, do you have anything else? After she searched me, do you have anything else on you that we should know about? No, 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 no. I had a pipe right here between my bra, between my boobs. That's where I always hit it. Something in my heart told me, tell them that you have a pipe. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. This is your chance, Candy. All these years, all these years that you've been struggling, this is your time you know, to shine. This is your time to let it go. This is your time to, to get sober. And I, I was crying to God. So something told me, tell her that you have a pipe. Okay, ma'am, I have something. I have a pipe here. I remember I gave her the pipe. Right when I gave her that pipe, a burden came off of me. Like I was free. Like, saying, yeah. like I was something new. Something changed within me and I felt it and I felt such a release. I was like, you know what? Even though my mom might be mad at me, even though that I might end up in jail, even though this and this might happen, I gave it away. I told them what I was doing and I never told anybody before. Now they know. Now my mom's going to know. And I don't care what happens. All I know and all I care is that I'm going to get sober. In reality, that's what you wanted. And that's what I wanted. That's what I always prayed for. I remember uh, I would always pray for it, crying in the shower. God, take this addiction away from me. I would cry and cry. And I remember right when I gave it away, this burden came off. Uh, two weeks later, my mom, she put me in the recovery home of Rick the Arvich. And I, right, right when I went in, Three days later, October, October 9th, 2010, I accepted God into my life. I remember till that day, I've been sober and I've just been soaring in my life. I've done so many things. Hey. I've been so blessed. And every day we all sin. But you know what? God is a God of love. And you know what? Everything that I've done in my life, you know, I did evangelism. I, I, I was reaching out to prostitutes, girls in human trafficking, people with drug addictions, you know, guys with, you know, dealing with porn. You know, I used to counsel with people. You know, you know what, you know, you know what built that relationship with me and them was love, you know, and love covers everything. Love is so strong. People don't realize that when you have a love for somebody, you could change that person just by love, just yeah. by action. And I believe that if these people that say they're Christian, that condemn gays, I believe that if they show, if you, if they showed them more love, that they could reach them more, they could help them with whatever they're going through, depression, anxiety. Imagine being a Christian and condemning that person. How, how does that make you like God? God was a God of love. Exactly. And I remember That's showing the these people love. I built so much relationships with, relationships with them until this day. 
I, I still have a relationship with them because I built that connection with them all because I never judged them all because I never condemned them. Love is so powerful and people don't get that, especially if you're labeling yourself as a Christian, you know, God is a God of love and I don't care who you are. When you love people, love covers everything. And every day we're not, we're not perfect. We're, we're not perfect. There's no such thing as perfect. We're going to sin. But as long as we can realize what we're doing and learn from it and grow and move on, that's all that matters, you know? And even with you guys, you know, being blessed with this following and reaching people, you're reaching so many people. We're touching so many people right now. And like, we don't, we don't even know what the hell they're going through. They're like, wow, man, like this podcast, man, this is, this is changing my life. And that's what it's all about. It's, you know, we're, we're servers. We're servers. You were born a server. You love serving. I was a server. I'm a bartender too. I love serving people. I love hospitality. I love bringing people to my house and here's this, here's that, you know, because it's in us. You know, it's always been in us and we're even serving right now with our words, with our wisdom, with our knowledge and with, we know, with our stories. And I just want to let you know that no matter what you do, you know, you are loved. Like just continue to work on yourself, continue to meditate, continue to do whatever you got to do to get through the day. You know, even though we do face, you know, things as Latinos or, or whatever it is we're, we're going to face throughout the day, prepare yourself, guard yourself. You know what I mean? As long as you're you. And as long as you go overcome that little obstacle, you're going to overcome bigger obstacles. And trust me, I'm not talking to a lot of my family right now either because of something that has been going on. But I told God, you know what, God, I know me. I know me. I know Candace. Even my therapist told me, Candy, if they're saying this about you, they don't know you. She's like, I know you, Candace. I like know her. you, Candy. Like it, you know, she's like, she's like, Candy, you're powerful. Everything that you went through in your life, Miha, you touched so many people in your life, even in ministry. I've done so much in my, in my ministry days. I was dedicated to the church for seven, eight years, dedicated my life, everything non-paid. I went to the East coast. You know, I used to, you still go to that church? I don't go to the church no more. Did you, did you I, I don't, there or was it choice? I mean, this was a long time ago. I don't really talk mm -hmm. to the people there. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if they're still there in Santa Ana, but I still have communication with some people on Facebook and they know what I do. They love me, you know, they do. And I feel like church is not just in the inside of the four walls. Church is outside because that's where God was. He was talking to the people on the streets. He was talking to the, the needy, the drug addicts. You know what I mean? How are you going to call yourself Christian? How are you going to save souls if you're in a church all the time? Yeah. You know what I mean? The church is a hospital. Because yes. They're trying to save themselves. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. Church is a hospital. People go there because it's a hospital because there's a need. Because we want change. There's something that we're seeking. What is it? What is it that we're seeking? We're seeking purpose. We're seeking something, you know, to take us out of this pit hole. What is it that yeah, we're yeah, seeking? Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? And like, like, honestly, like, I'm so blessed. Everything that I went through in my life was for a reason. It was for a reason. You, you know, kids? You have kids? I, I don't have it. I don't have any kids. Girl, you, you know, like kids. I, you, you sound know. like you got kids. Like, you sound like, you know, I've, I, like do, sometimes when you have kids, your, your mind opens. Girl, you, it seems like your mind's open like if you just like pop like some kids and the, you know the Okay, kids. let me tell you something that no one knows about me. What is it, girl? Say it. That no one knows, that I never told anybody. I just told two people in my family. I say that I don't have kids, but I do. Okay? Do you have kids? <laughs> I do. Oh, mommy. Where, where, where are your kids? Hold on. <laughs> Oh, mommy, you're getting me too. <laughs> That's beautiful for you to say that, mommy. Woo! I don't even know. <laughs> okay, so, um, so when I was young, when I was 14, you know, something bad happened to me. So one that I thought that was a father figure, he took advantage of me. Anyways. I had a baby, and no one knows this. I had a baby when I was 15 years old. Till this day, I talk to her. Oh. <laughs> you don't even know that. I don't know that. No. I love you for sharing this with us. So till this day, I talk to her. She knows that I'm her mom. So the people that adopted her, since she was a baby, they've shown her photo books of oh, me. You're free, girl. They've shown her photo books of me. This is your real mom. This is who your mom is. 
And it's so funny because when I talk to her adoptive parents, her mom, she's like, oh my gosh, Candace, she is just like you. She's artistic. She loves to draw. She loves to sing. She loves God. She sends me, you know, I see her on Instagram. She's working out. She loves the gym. And like, I talked to her. We talked so good to each other. Like she has no hate towards me. She has like, she just has this love and this passion. And you, did what you, gotta you do. know, what you're supposed to do at that moment. I know? did. I, cause you know what? That thing that happened to me, it's not like, you know, whatever happened to me happened to me. And I knew that the, that, that what I had to do at that time, it was best for her. I couldn't give her that life. I couldn't. And where she's at now, she is blessed with a family that loves her. She has a big family, something that I don't even have right now, you know, blood. You get me? Yeah. Everything happened for a reason. The life that they gave her, I couldn't give her at 14 years old. Yeah. You know what I mean? And just for, a, just, in, just for able for me to have an open adoption and to be able to talk to her is such a blessing. I'm so happy that I did that. Because now that I'm older, I think, man, what if I just told them, just take her, have her. I'm going to be thinking, man, where's my daughter? Is she okay? Where's my blood? And till this day, I talk to her. And if I show you a picture of her, we'll, we'll, we'll post it. Yeah. When I show you a picture of her, she looks exactly like me. Exactly. And every time my girlfriend, she tells me, how's your daughter? And every time she sees the messages between me and her, she starts crying. She's like, well, Candy, even though what happened in the past, she still has that love for you. Like, there's no condemnation. She doesn't tell me, oh, why did you give me away? What, what happened? This and that. It's all love. And I believe that. You know, whatever that I went through in my past, it made me who I am today, you know? And this is nothing that I ever told anybody. But you know what? This is real. This is real. This is flowing in the truth. And I always told, I, I always told God, I don't know when I'm going to talk about this, but I guess today was a day. You know? Today was a day that I feel so good. Like, I feel so good. And people that know me, they know that Candy doesn't have a kid. But now they're going to know that Candy does have a gift. That's why whenever Mother's Day comes, don't ever condemn a person. Just because you don't see a person with a kid, don't don't think that they're not a mother. Because yeah. you don't know what they went through. There's you, women. It's so weird how you gave me, like, like, I was like, you give me mama vibes. You mm, give me mama vibes. Wow, see? So that weird. is so crazy. You never know what someone is going through. That's why every lady that I see, happy Mother's Day. Because that mom, that lady could have a happy miscarriage. Because that's a mama thing, what you did. You were 14 and you knew. I'm going to fuck her up if I keep her. Exactly. This is a duty. You, you need to do what you got to do. You know what I'm saying? This is your story. It don't matter what anybody got to say. Exactly. Exactly. I'm, I'm, glad, I'm, I'm so happy you, you said that. And I am. I'm so I, happy now that the world... No, the, you guys know now that I have a kid? <laughs> yeah, you, I better be getting some Mother Day gifts. You know what I mean? So yeah. shit. You know what I mean? And you know what? <laughs> She's going to see this episode and... Just know, just know, guys, like, you could change the world by, by, by bringing out your Shout stories, out you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. you know this, what I mean? Oh, my God, I don't even know what to say. I don't I'm even know. Happy that I don't know. Th this is, to me, like, just to have this here oh and set gosh. up. Like, I was not, I don't, was I, don't I know, being like, interviewed? I thought you guys were being interviewed. Like, what the, <laughs> this, it's just the energy, it's just the vibes, you see? Yeah. This is non-scripted, we don't have no notes here, this is... This is just unfiltered. You know what I mean? We're unfiltered people. And this is just raw stuff coming to the surface. Why? Because it needs to. Yeah. You know, we were all appointed together for a reason. Yeah. You know? And I thank God so much for bringing you guys in my life. You know? Like, I thank you so much. And, like, you know, we're changing lives right now. You know? Yeah. And after this, like, I don't know what to say no more. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just, woo! This is a lot for, wow. But you know what? I feel like people change my life when I get direct messages. Oh, my gosh. The things that they say, the way they see and they feel us, it's so beautiful. Like, we're just not on social media, dancing to music. It's something bigger, you know what I mean? Especially just sharing, like, a little story, like what you just shared right now. A lot of people are, like, a lot of women, a lot of men are just, like, man. I feel her, you know what I'm saying? Like you said, this is something that needs to be heard. And sometimes you feel like, I mean, yeah, people go through it or whatever, but you're helping a lot of people. What you said too, you know what I mean? How you just said, we're, here we are, just three gay men, and we're so different, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We're showing people that gay men, are, they, they, they live different, they move different. We're different, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, wow. We're so powerful, you know? Yeah. We are, we're just so powerful. And, <laughs> you know, for, for any any women you know that are going through 
stuff in their life that that been abused, that been raped, that been I've been in foster care, you know. I've been through a lot of stuff, re, re, uh, recovery home. Women that have been through, you know, all that stuff, you know, like, just keep going. Like, your story does not end. Just because you went through stuff in your life in the past, and you don't have to make it your reality. Yeah. You know, and I tell people, we make choices each and every day. And the choices that we make from this day on is going to determine our future. You, you know? Well, I used to work in therapy. Well, I, hey, I, 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 I need to go to you. Come on, let's go, man. For real, man. I need some sessions going yeah, on, don't you know? Like but I don't, I don't want you to be. We're friends now, <laughs> I know how yeah, I need, therapist. I need you now, Marissa. <laughs> For real, man. Hey, even even there, even therapists yeah, need need it. need it too. Yeah, it's so crazy. They're human. We're all human, I guys. We're all hear, people. Hear, 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 they're like, okay, let me call my therapist. For real, man. <laughs> you know, and you know what? Just just say like, even though you guys were supposed to be, you know, interviewed, and it it went back and forth, like. Everything happened for well, a reason. About, though, Thank you yeah. so much. They were, Thank we're you. In front of humans, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. What it's supposed to be, and I love that. I love that you guys felt comfortable enough to also share things and not just make it about us because it's not about us. It's about all of us. It's about mm. whoever's watching too. You wow, know what man. That's just not how, like when I see guys that look like us. I was like, if I'm up, you up. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't know what I say all the time. When I see Pelona, it's like, hey man, if I'm up, you up. That's right. Like because it's like you know, I in, it, that's just the, I don't I'm, I don't have brothers, so I never really been competitive like that. So if anybody wants to compete with me, I'm like, why are you trying to compete with me? I won, bitch. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, nobody, I don't, I don't know what you want to yeah. get in my lane. It's like, okay, move, bitch. You know yeah. That's right, man. I don't understand it. And I will never get in nobody's lane. I don't see another man and feel competitive. Mm-hmm. I don't have that again, being raised by women. No man. So when men try to be competitive with me, I don't know how to deal with that. That puts me in a weird position. Like, I'm going to fuck you up. You know what I'm saying? Like, Babe, we're only yeah, competing with ourselves. We're, we're just all opening doors and breaking down barriers for, for people that are similar to us, that can relate to us. And I just feel like that's what it's all about, man. Yeah. Like, let's just let's just keep moving. Let's keep changing. Let's keep changing the way the that's world right. thinks about people like us. Because we're not everything they think we are, you know? That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Because because everyone things, can relate to us, It's just man. humans, you know what I'm exactly. saying? Exactly. It's just humans. Yeah. We're just humans. And, and we want... just love who we love. That's, yeah. that's, that's yeah. it. And that's if right. If you want to over, over look at it and just taboo that shit, like, it's weird that people see it like taboo nowadays. Like, it's weird because, like, there's a lot of men that we know that are older than us that look like us, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, like that one actor from, from Friday. Oh, Rolando Molina. Oh. oh baby, baby Joker. Woo, hey, hey, Baby Joker. Joker. Yeah. No more locked doors. Hey. <laughs> and he's on these movies that, you know, and older than us, you know what I'm saying? And if a word being taboo, and look at this man, and this man boy before him. Yeah. So I feel like it's weird because we've been living our life. We've never been hidden. Like people, mm-hmm. like like when we just we just went to like Pride. We went to Los to LA Pride and we went to like Long Beach Pride. People like come up to us and they're like, to, "Hey, you guys are like a, 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 you guys are like a staple. You guys are a staple in the community." And I'm like, people have been doing this way longer than we have, but people are just finally paying attention. You know? Yeah. It's like, it's really I'm really so honored. Really We're so blessed. Honored. and We love that. There's and, something uh, unique we, about you guys. Yeah, there exactly. is. Well, I don't even see it, man. I'm just like... Well, sometimes the things that we don't see, other people see, yeah. you know? We, we see in other people to bring it out of them. That's why when I met you guys at Flux, I was like, there's something about them. We got to bring them on, you know? And, like, I just told Ray, we have to bring these guys on. I want to hear their story. And we're not going to write nothing down. What are we going to ask them? Let yeah. me see. No, we're just going to flow with it. I love that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, that, that can yeah. be a lot, too, to be just kind of, like, off the, off the head. That's what we, we go off of that feeling. Like, we were talking yesterday on the phone. I was like, oh, like, you know, uh, getting the, the setup and, like, everybody helping out. And then uh, we're like, oh, uh, what are we going to talk about? But I just felt, like, in my heart, we both did that. It was just going to flow. It, we're and just whatever gonna flow. it was, was going to be that. And That's it. I felt confident in that. And yeah. It I'm like, this out, is what we yeah. do, baby. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> when I met you, I wasn't aware of the, the best. I just thought about it that I met her with. She's going to be like, this one never takes off that best. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I changed it in the car. But I was like, Did you? I didn't. Like, I don't know. I was I, I was on a drinky drinky. We so. were all pretty lit. Woo! <laughs> Shout out to everybody that bought me free drinks that day. Yeah, I didn't yeah, pay for yeah. nothing. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> for real? Hey, hey, if I could get it, why not? Shoot, these are expensive these days. 
wow, like, this is what the platform is all about. Yeah. Just the real, rawness, authentic, and to share the story. And I feel like we, we all are different personalities, but just coming together and just making it happen in the way that we do. And that's, to me, like, I'm just forever thankful for that, to yeah. connect and have these, like, sure. real moments. And that yeah. means a lot, it's personally, to me, that makes me a better person, that makes me, like, just feel more love and more, like, human. I and that, that that's what yeah. this is about yeah. you see this is what i'm talking about too like if we have like people want to call it a platform i have a duty to be nothing but real then right. i will never i always talk about this man twitch remember twitch from oh, yeah from the ellen DeGeneres um, show i saw his wife because we um we saw, we saw his wife at um, costco at costco and he had he has kids and i just felt so like i just you know she has a smile on her face but you know he committed suicide he had a platform you know I me mean? as a dancer his wife's a dancer and they painted a beautiful picture, beautiful kids, beautiful house, beautiful career working with Alan. And he, he didn't feel that comfortable to speak about that. And was it the management? Was it the wife? Who was somebody that's, or was it himself that didn't feel comfortable to say this? You know what I'm saying? I feel like I would never be in that position. I feel like I have a duty to say how I feel. I'm, I, you know, for people to just be like, you know, I'm always happy. Yeah, we're happy, but like we got feelings. And we go through stuff, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's the duty and whatever platform you have, you need to use it for that. Exactly, shit, you know exactly. And I feel like I, it always hurts my heart to hear that Twitch was a beautiful man, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And he was going through something, he was drowning to the point that he needed to put himself in that position that he did. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like stories like him, Robin, Robin Williams. Too, oh my gosh. You know what I'm saying? I feel like people Oof. like these things, like they have it all figured out. That's what we're searching for. That That's the goal, to be in their level. For, you know, and that's... They look what they're at, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I feel yeah. like, fuck no, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to speak how I speak. Yes. I'm, I'm, whatever I feel, I'm going to let it out, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. I totally agree. Yeah. I totally agree. So I appreciate you guys so much yeah. for allowing us to be here. And for you guys to be so open too, you know? Yeah. You guys made us feel so comfortable, you know? Yeah. If I wasn't comfortable, I would have been like this. <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. I was like, like, yeah. Before I got here, I was meditating, and I was like, you know what? Like, I was praying to God. I'm like, you know what, God? Whatever is said today, whatever happens, gonna be for your, your glory. You know, for a reason. It's gonna reach out to. We, you, we don't know that guy that's going through something, that girl, that woman. Yeah. You know, even me bringing this out about my daughter that no one knows, nobody. Everybody that knows Candace as a trainer, even, as an actor, as a bartender, yeah. everything that yeah. I did in my life, no one knew this about me. So this yeah. was for that person out there, yeah. you and know? You. Yes, and for me. For you, and um, for me, you know? Yeah. yeah, and you guys are not alone. You know, you guys are not alone. Yeah. And you feel, make it feel yes, Hello, yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I feel like I feel what like was like said was said, right? It's, yeah, it's huh? Just a, like, like, just a free way to, like, yeah. like, shit. going show this down again uh, uh, part, part two. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, you guys are always welcome to come back on, oh, and sure. you know, if anything, yeah. Uh, uh, first guests for season two. Woo! Uh, episode one, yeah, season episode two. One. Yes, y'all in the seasons. <laughs> well, thank you everybody so much for watching. You know, flowing in the truth. Oh, and <laughs> Oh, this one. We'll do this. <laughs> He's like, where are they at? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> right there. <laughs> the so unscripted, guys. We love it. All right, guys. Well, thank you everybody so much for watching. I'm Candy. That's Ray. Yes, guys. Hey. Thank you, watching for flowing in the truth. We'll see you guys next time. Woo! Thank you.